Hey guys, it's me, Seren, back with another video. We are on day two of our 28 days of vlogging for Black Her Story Month. Um, I want to say really quick before I start that I have my new lamp on. Remember I told you guys a while ago that I bought a new lamp, but that it's like really bright, so I haven't used it. I have it on right now. It's casting a shadow, which is really distracting for me, but maybe it's not for you guys. So let me know what you think about this lamp and what you think about this light and what you think about this shadow. And if you want me to continue filming with this light or not. Um, so today's hidden figure is going to be Edmonia Lewis. Now someone suggested her. I don't know person that suggested her. I don't know if you suggested her because she was yesterday's Google Doodle. Um, she was the doodle put up on the, the Google homepage um, to kind of kick off Black History Month. But someone suggested her and I also saw that she was the Google doodle. And I read up about her and I thought that she just sounded like really, really, really incredible. And this was someone that before yesterday, I had never heard of in my life. Never, right? So she definitely counts as a hidden figure. So Edmonia Lewis was is, is believed to be the first African-American artist, and, and she was a sculptor, the first African-American artist to get widespread recognition within the fine art world. So I'm gonna read you guys, just like I did you know, yesterday, I'm gonna read you guys a little bit. This one's gonna be from the Smithsonian website, and of course there's gonna be links in the description box if you wanna read up more. Edmonia Lewis, the first professional African-American sculptor, was born in New York in 1843. Again, just like I said last time, the first professional African-American sculptor. Not the first professional African-American woman sculptor, not, you know, the first professional African-American sculptor, period, was this black woman. Was born in New York in 1843. I have to sneeze, guys. Hold on. Sneeze, come on, sneeze. Oh, wait, wait. No, it's going away. Was born in was born in New York in 1843. Ew, there it goes. Got him. Got him. Sorry, guys. And Monia Lewis, the first professional African-American sculptor, was born in Greenbush, New York in 1844. Her father was a free African-American and her mother a Chippewa Indian. Orphaned, oh, that should be Native American, but okay, Smithsonian. Orphaned before she was five, Lewis lived with her mother's nomadic tribe until she was 12 years old. And her older brother, Sunrise, left the Chippewas and moved to California where he became a gold miner. He financed his sister's early schooling in Albany and also helped her to attend Oberlin College in Ohio in 1859. While at Oberlin, she shed her Chippewa name and took the name Mary Edmonia Lewis. Her career at Oberlin ended abruptly when she was accused of poisoning two of her white roommates. Lewis was acquitted of the charge, though she had to endure not only a highly publicized trial, but also a severe beating by white vigilantes. White people doing what they do best, being fucking savages. Meanwhile, accusing black people of being and doing the very same things that they are. Projection. Subsequently accused of stealing art supplies, she was not permitted to graduate from Oberlin. Lewis left Oberlin in 1863 and again, through her brother's encouragement and financial assistance, moved to Boston. There she met the portrait sculptor Edward Brackett, under whose division, excuse me, under whose direction she began her limited sculptural studies. She was determined to become a sculptor, and with a minimum of training, exposure, and experience, Lewis began producing portraits of well-known abolitionists. Lewis was able to finance her first trip to Europe in 1865. After traveling to London, Paris, and Florence, Lewis decided to settle in Rome. A number of other American sculptors lived in Rome at this time because of the availability of fine white marble, but Lewis was unique among sculptors of her generation in Rome as she rarely employed Italian workmen and completed most of her work without assistance. Apparently, this woman was only four feet tall, Yet she made these huge, larger than lifestyle sculptures of, you know, African Americans and indigenous peoples, Native Americans, in this, you know, kind of classic, what we call classic, because, you know, European art is considered classic. I've made videos on that, how it's considered the norm, the standard, high art, fine art. So she was basically a pioneer in this, this genre that we've really seen explode a lot as well recently, right, in, in creating this 
African-American centered work in what was traditionally seen as a, you know, European classic style, right? She was one of the pioneers of that. She was the first, you know, professional sculptor to do that, right? Lewis, whose work stood out among other sculptors in her dedication to representing her African-American and Native American heritage, also created other sculptures that included mythological subjects and imitations of works by artists like Michelangelo. The majority of her work unfortunately did not survive, but the noteworthy Death of Cleopatra is currently on display at the Smithsonian American Art Museum in Washington, D.C. The details of her exact passing are unknown, but she is believed to have died in 1907. Lewis was inspired by the lives of abolitionists and Civil War heroes. Her subjects in 1863 and 1864 included some of the most famous abolitionists of her day, John Brown and Colonel Robert Gould Shaw. Lewis was concerned about the coverage she received in the abolitionist press. She knew that some did not really appreciate her art, but saw her as an opportunity to express and show their support for human rights which we still see happening right now in 2017, right? Performative allyship. You don't really respect what I'm doing. You just want to show how you are a good white ally. How to be a white ally? Don't! Her work often sold for large sums of money. And in 1873, an article in the New Orleans Picayune stated, Edmonia Lewis has snared two $50,000 commissions. That is amazing. Lewis had many major exhibitions during her rise to fame, including one in Chicago, Illinois in 1870 and in Rome in 1871. A woman that just had so much talent that it just could not be denied. Edmonia Lewis. First professional African-American sculptor. I'm going to read you guys some quotes from Edmonia Lewis that resonated with me. My first thought was for my poor father's people, how I could do them good in a very small way. My mother was a wild Indian and was born in Albany of copper color and with straight black hair. There she made and sold moccasins. My father, who was a Negro and a gentleman's servant, saw her and married her. There is nothing so beautiful as the free forest to catch a fish when you are hungry, cut the boughs of a tree, Make fire to roast it and eat it in the open air is the greatest of all luxuries. I would not stay a week pent up in cities if it were not my passion for art. I was delighted to learn, very eager. I had never learned anything. I was, I was declared to be wild. They could do nothing with me. Often they said to me, here is your book, the book of nature. Come and study it. I thought of returning to wildlife again, but my love of, sculp of sculpture forbade it. I have a strong sympathy for all women who have struggled and suffered. When questioned how she became an artist, she replied, well, it was a strange selection for a poor girl to make, wasn't it? I suppose it was in me. I became almost crazy to make something like the thing which fascinated me. I was practically driven to Rome in order to obtain the opportunities for art culture and to find a social atmosphere where I was not constantly reminded of color. The land of liberty had no room for a colored sculptor. I want to read that again. The land of liberty had no room for a colored sculptor. So is it the land of liberty? Edmonia Lewis, Hidden Figures, Black Her Story Month, day two. Make sure you check the description box for links. Food for thought as always. See you guys tomorrow. Peace.